In tonight's headlines, Taiwanese foreign minister completes three-day visit to Belize. Pueblo Viejo and Conejo get new solar energy water systems, and our Belize Now team gets an update on the goals in the house. These stories and more on this week's edition of Belize Now. Thanks for joining us on this Friday, July 28, 2017. I'm Charlie Hutchinson. His Excellency Dr. David Lee, Foreign Minister of the Republic of China, Taiwan, has completed a three-day visit to Belize from the 26th to 28th of July 2017 on the invitation of Honorable Wilfred Ellington, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Belize. During his visit, the Foreign Minister signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Bilateral Cooperation, received an Order of Distinction and visited Taiwan's technical mission in Central Farm, Cayo District. Janelle Rodriguez tells us more. Belize and Taiwan are known to have strong diplomatic relations. Bilateral relations between the two countries have been maintained since 1989, and in 2017, ties continue to strengthen. This week, His Excellency Dr. David Lee, Foreign Minister of the Republic of China, Taiwan, came on an official visit to Belize. On Wednesday, the first day of his arrival, Minister Lee signed a Memorandum of Understanding on Bilateral Cooperation, through which Taiwan will provide $60 million to Belize, one-third in grants and the remainder in loans, which will be disbursed over the next four years. This support will contribute directly to the development of Belize. In his remarks, Belize's Foreign Minister, Honorable Wilfred Elrington, expressed his gratitude. Of course, the tremendous, tremendous assistance they afford us in terms of budget support and support for developmental program cannot be overstated. And this afternoon, we are going to be um, signing a, an MOU, which will see us um, continue to be assisted by Taiwan um, to the tune of in excess of $60 million. It's a very impressive sum. We can't overstate again our appreciation. Minister Elrington then conferred the Order of Distinction on Minister Li. In recognition of the friendly relations between Belize and the Republic of China, Taiwan, and of the valuable contributions that Taiwan has made to Belize over the nearly three decades. And the official events of the ministerial visit continued, as His Excellency Dr. David Lee and his delegation visited the Tilapia Hatchery Center in Central Farm on July 27. The visit allowed the minister and the delegation to review a completed aquaculture project, an update of the genetic improvement in the sheep and goat project, collaborative projects of the Agriculture Department of Belize and the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, the foreign minister was able to witness the project as its infrastructure and equipment continues to operate. Miguel Sosa, aquaculture coordinator at the aquaculture unit at Central Farm, told us more about the tour. What we needed to show the Minister of Foreign Affairs from Taiwan today was the results of a five-year project that was done in Belize. This uh, facility is uh, part of the work that the aquaculture unit in the agriculture department has to do. This is the Tilapia Hatchery Center, and it is uh, this farm that was built with a project from Taiwan over five years and an investment of 2.5 uh, million US dollars. So it was important for me to show him what the funding did, all the manpower, what it resulted in. So we showed him uh, the 16 ponds on the farm. We showed him the tilapias, the two kinds that we have, the red and the gray. We explained to him a bit about the, the technical part of fish farming, which is something we do with fish farmers also. So we kind of gave him the same info we would give to a, a fish farmer in Belize. His Excellency Dr. David Lee told us what his experience on his official visit has been like. It has been a wonderful uh, tour of your country. And today we are very impressed with uh, the agricultural projects that we have uh, worked together. And uh, we have seen the physical uh, you know, evidence of uh, the, our, our collaborations. And we hope uh, you know, the final uh, products will spin off and uh, can really benefit uh, the people of Belize. The foreign minister also shared ways in which he believes Belize can continue to benefit from bilateral relations with Taiwan. Taiwan is pretty much uh, advanced uh, in the agricultural technology. I think uh, those are something uh, I think will really help the people of Belize. 
also I, uh, information technology is our strength. According to His Excellency Dr. David Lee, Belize can look forward to more developments in the Belize-Taiwan relationship. My colleagues, uh, Ambassador Liu and his uh, staff, uh, will continue to work with, uh, with your government, with your people, to see what we can work together for the future. Minister Lee and his delegation concludes their visit today, July 28, with an aerial tour of Belize's famous Blue Hole and a press briefing at the Samuel Haynes Center of Excellence. His visit reflects the continued growth of the relationship between Belize and Taiwan. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Rodriguez. On Wednesday, July 26, the Belize National Forensic Services was granted over 800,000 U.S. dollars worth of vehicles and forensic science equipment. The generous donation was funded by the U.S. Embassy in an effort to further improve the National Forensic Science Services. The Minister of State with Responsibility for Home Affairs, Honorable Elodio Aragon Jr., spoke of the significance of the donation received and how it will be utilized. Today's donation include nine customized Ford F-150 trucks fitted with crime scene investigation kits as well as cameras for taking pictures at the scenes of crime. The trucks alone valued at near US $450,000. These trucks will be deployed to the Belize City, Ladyville, Corozal Town, Orange Walk Town, San Ignacio Town, Belmopan City, Dangriga Tong, Independence Village, and Punta Gorda. The department is also receiving a series of miscellaneous items for firearm and ammunition analysis to a value of over $350,000. The acting chargé d'affaires of the U.S. Embassy in Belize, Mr. Nathan Bland, discussed the nature of the donation. This handover is one part of the overall forensics project that our INL team at the U.S. Embassy is coordinating to try to assist the government of Belize, improving the capability and the capacity of the National Forensic Science Services Scenes of Crime Unit to fulfill their duties, which is to efficiently and thoroughly process scenes of crime. The goal of these donations is to better assist the forensic department to fulfill their duties. Hopefully, as they begin to conduct more effective crime scene processing and help to solve more complex cases. Those who wish to commit crimes may become dissuaded as they realize that their chances of being caught and ultimately convicted continues to increase. It is expected that the donation will have an immediate impact on the police department's efforts to process crime scenes, collect evidence and to successfully prosecute criminal offenders. The government of Belize continues to be a beneficiary of the United States Central America Regional Security Initiative, CARSI. Since 2008, the government has received 40 million U.S. dollars in support to enhance citizen security and rule of law. On Tuesday, July 25th, our Belize Now team visited the Goldson House in Belmopan. The day marked the 94th birthday of Belizean hero Philip Goldson, in whose memory the museum is built. Here's what our team learned on their visit. On September 25, 2015, the Goldson House opened its doors for the very first time. The museum, which is housed in the former home of Belize's father of democracy and Belizean hero, Philip Stanley Wilberforce Goldson, is a vast library of information on Goldson's life, career, and contributions to Belize. On what would have been Goldson's 94th birthday, we visited the museum to learn more about its purpose and the work they have been doing. Kendra Griffith, coordinator at the Golson House, spoke to us. The Golson House is a research and education space. Um, it's also a museum space, so our goal is to have students come and take a tour of the Golson House and um, people in general, and then at the end continue to do their research because we, wanted, we want to create it into our research center. We also assist with research, so for example, this is a great place to bring children for um, social studies, for history class, and you know, when there's that assignment of um, Belizean heroes, it has not only information on Philip Golson, but it has um, contributions that other people like Lee Richardson, um, Nicholas Pollard Sr. did as well, and just different people that have, in, have been involved in the movement and the growth of our nation. 
We asked Griffith what the reception of visitors to the museum has been like. Some come with an open mind, some come not knowing what they're going to expect, but when they leave, they leave um, in awe of what Golson did for our country, how he, his um, contributions shaped the society we live in today. Um, we have students and children that, um, for example, high school students change their SBAs to a topic um, on Golson and the independence movement, students saying that they wanted to be a lawyer, to be a politician, and things that, it's just a little bit of something always changes the mind of someone. From August 11th to 13th, children aged 6 to 13 years old can take advantage of the Golson House Summer Program. This camp will feature a tour and lessons on Golson and the independence movement, arts and craft, and a unique opportunity to learn to read Braille. Golson became um, blind in 1978 due to glaucoma, so he served 21 years of service as a liar and as a politician. Um, and as a Belizean activist, completely blind. So we want um, to have students and other people connect in that manner um, because Golson went to New York to learn how to read Braille. So we want them to basically have a little bit of um, how he came about doing these things. He'd never let his disability be an obstacle in his life. He never let and basically anything be an obstacle in the goals that he had. In October of this year, a children's book titled The Boy with the Big Name will be published and launched. The book will allow children to better understand the life and contributions of Golson. We're very excited because um, it's just a way to share the information um, with different age ranges. And Miss Myrna is actually, Miss Myrna Manzanares is actually the author of the children's book, and we're excited to have those in the hands of young Belizeans as well. Um, Mr. Larry Vernon is actually working on the biography of Philip Golson, which will be launched on early 2018. Apart from books, there are also other exciting opportunities Belizeans, young and old, can take advantage of to learn more about this Belizean hero. We'll be working on the um, art competition based on the theme of democracy and patriotism that will be later on this year. And then there's always just coming to visit the Golson house. We'll be having um, meet, meet the Golsons and even an evening with the Golsons, sorry. And um, where you can take a tour and then talk and converse with his daughter, his sister and so forth, learning a bit about how Golson was as a father, son and brother and just um, we're going to be personalizing Golson much more and having people know who he was and what he has done. It's my firm belief that it's in, the, in Belize's interest um, that Belizeans on the whole face of the earth should become involved in, the, in, 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 in restoring uh, their ownership of Belize. And um, should be involved in the management of the nation, in the, in the making of policies, mm -hmm. in serving in government, um, that we cannot, with a small population, um, uh, fragment our human resources simply because of geography. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Mencias. The Golson House is located at number 82 Orange Street in Belmopan. To learn more about the Goldson House, you can visit their Facebook page at the Goldson House for Democracy and Patriotism or contact them at 822-2613. After the break, more stories. Stay with us. The new Belize City Civic Center is taking shape at the foot of the Belkin Bridge and is expected to be completed by December 2017. This multi-purpose mega facility will boast an air-conditioned interior with a seating capacity of 4,500, a FIBA-certified wooden main court and three practice courts, offices, media boxes and multiple locker rooms, another basketball court with 24-hour access to the public and parking for 200 vehicles. This $33 million investment highlights a new era of world-class sporting infrastructure for the entire country of Belize. The government of Belize, moving Belize forward.
August 1st to 7th will be celebrated as World Breastfeeding Week worldwide under the theme Sustaining Breastfeeding Together. The week is focused on the promotion, protection and support of breastfeeding by anyone, anywhere and anytime. Belize, through its Ministry of Health and in partnership with the World Health Organization, WHO, and the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has jumped on board the movement. Mrs. Anne Matut, Nursing Administrator at the Maternal and Child Health Unit, told us why breastfeeding is so important. We usually tell our mothers from birth to six months, you fully breastfeed. And after that, you could continue breastfeed but give complementary feeding, okay? and you could breastfeed as long as you want. This um, assists the child in them having better nutrition. Um, they, they have less um, obesity. Um, it also helps with asthma, long-term asthma, right? It helps with that. And for the mother also, it also assists her in um, for her not to have any kind of cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, and so on. To observe the week, the Ministry of Health will be hosting a health fair in San Narciso Village in the Corozal District. The fair will feature several booths promoting and supporting breastfeeding. In addition to the health fair, the Ministry will also be hosting a competition. We are having a photo competition, right? And this competition, we want to, the mother breastfeeding the baby, but what we want is to see that bonding in the picture, right? So we are asking all breastfeeding mothers up to one year old, to um, the baby's one year old, to send in their photos for us, okay? And then we'll have this competition and we'll giving prizes out to the first, we'll be giving out three prizes, first, second, and third. Mothers interested in participating in the competition can submit their photos to breastfeeding at health.gov.bz by no later than Monday, July 31st. The photo must show breastfeeding and bonding between mother and baby birth to one year and should show support from family, healthcare systems or the workplace. Since 2012, all public health hospitals across the country, including the Carl Huesner Memorial Hospital, have been certified mother and baby friendly. The initiative, which was launched in 1991 through the collaborative efforts of the WHO and UNICEF, ensures that every facility providing maternity services meet all necessary criteria in the promotion, protection and support of successful breastfeeding. Health facilities acquire the certification after successfully implementing 10 specific steps. The government of Belize, in its continued commitment to address the basic needs of Belizeans in the areas of water, sanitation and health, is ensuring that the men, women and children of rural Belize have access to the supply of safe water to meet their daily needs. To move towards this goal, new solar energy water systems were inaugurated in the villages of Pueblo Viejo and Conejo Creek on Thursday, July 20th. Janelle Rodriguez has more. Water. It is humanity's basic need, our most precious resource, yet the people in Conejo and Pueblo Vuejo did not have easy access to it. While residents of the more urban areas of Belize can access clean water by simply turning on their faucets, villagers of Conejo and Pueblo Vuejo had to walk miles to the nearest pump or river simply to have access to water. Today, because of the efforts of the Government of Belize through the Social Investment Fund and the Ministry of Rural Development, these communities now have solar-driven water systems that allows residents to access portable water from their homes. In his remarks, Kerry Belal, CEO in the Ministry of Rural Development, mentioned the significance of the project. The Government of Belize has seen it fit to spend over $700,000. That is $700,000 to make sure that each and every one of those 141 families, each and every one of the 800 or so residents of Pueblo Viejo have clean, potable water every day, every time you turn on the pipe. The solar energy water systems will also contribute significantly to the reduction in the vulnerability of men, women, and children to incidences of waterborne, foodborne, vector-borne, and communicable diseases, 
improving the quality of life of villagers in over 150 households. Some of the villagers shared with us what it was like to not have access to clean water. Well, with the experience that we have had, it, it, for, many, for many people in the community, it has been one that is difficult. Uh, people would have had to fetch their water you know, from the river at times. Or, uh, many of them have wells, and uh, we do have hand pumps likewise. Um, before we have we have had a water system however um, it, it was done and it was done for some years now almost a decade um, so it was people got used to it you know and then and then now and people got used to it so because they got used to it you know um, people find it a bit difficult to be getting water to their homes especially the ladies before the water system the people of Conejo, the children that uh, used to go to the creeks, wells, uh, as long as it's like uh, good to you, um, good to drink, they usually go and get water from the creeks and wells, and even some others, um, hand pumps that is uh, built by our rural development and other ministries. And uh, but then we face the difficulties when the dry season comes. Sometimes the creeks and sometimes the wells are. I get dry and then they don't have that um, enough safe water drinking anymore. I think that's why they are all, always sick. And worse, like babies, they get loose tools, vomiting. The most of the people, they have their well, but sometimes in dry weather, uh, the wells get dry. So that's why it's very important with our water, um, safe water and drinking water. You know. Indeed. Having access to clean water is essential, and the residents of Conejo Creek and Pueblo Viejo now do. The scope of works for Pueblo Viejo Solar Energy Water System includes the rehabilitation of an existing 13,500-gallon capacity tank structure, construction of a new pump house, fence, and installation of a solar power system, and a diesel power generator. For Conejo Creek Solar Energy Water System, the scope of works included the construction of an elevated steel frame structure to support four 2,640 gallons rotoplast water tanks with all required piping and accessories, a 10 by 20 pump house with a fence encompassing the area, a submersible solar water pump and chlorinator, and a solar panel array. The water tank was constructed at the highest point in the village. Thus, water will be gravity fed to villagers. William Lam, Executive Director of SIF, spoke about the purpose of the investment. Today, you are here as witness to the government of Belize's flagship social investment fund, who has implemented this Pueblo Viejo solar energy water system as part of its mandate to mitigate poverty in the lives of Belizeans around the country. And uh, SIF does that in other areas, also in education, in health, in drainage, and other infrastructure. Today, we are celebrating the official inauguration of this solar water system. It's not just an ordinary water system, but one that is powered by the sun and, uh, and uh, well, diesel power. Some of the community members shared how they feel about the change. Right now it's more easier. They, they have uh, safe drinking water. We could say that it's safe. Um, they, they don't need to go from for a distance to get water. Well, providing that we have a functional system and that something that will be sustainable, I believe that having water next to your doorstep um, can be a life changer. It's not, it's, it's, it's not hard now because we, don't, we have water and we don't have to go to the river or well. I thank God for that I have water at home now. Like, if, like when it's raining and muddy, we can't go in the mud and get water. Sometimes slippery. But now I thank God that we have that we have <laughs> that we have water. Most of the women here are going to draw water about almost um, by uh, about 
two miles going to Guatemala road. Um, most of our women go to wash there and wash their clothes or get drinking water going to San Antonio Road when it's dry season. So that's why it's very important and we are glad that we have this water system. In his remarks at the Pueblo Vuejo inauguration, Honorable Erwin Contreras, Minister with Responsibility for SIF, spoke about why the event is not only historic for the Toledo district, but for the country of Belize. Today is a historic day for you, the people of Pueblo Viejo, and for the government of Belize. Historic because it is your government under the leadership of the right Honorable Dean Barrow that, the, that this new solar energy water system was built for you, the people of Pueblo Viejo. Why? Because water, my friends, is the gift of life. And it is, and it, and it is this under this government that we are ensuring that you, the people of Pueblo Viejo, men, women, and children, have safe water. Save water to meet the daily needs of over 800 villagers, 141 households. Good water for drinking, for bathing, for washing, for cooking the delicious caldo. The water projects were implemented by Belize Social Investment Fund, an implementing agency of the government of Belize that addresses the basic needs of Belizeans as enshrined in government's policy to alleviate poverty. The Central American Commission for Maritime Transport, in collaboration with the Belize Port Authority, Port of Belize, and Port of Big Creek, held the 39th Central American Port Forum this week from Wednesday, July 25th to today, July 28th. The Central American Isthmus Port Meeting was attended by over 80 delegates from eight countries representing port managers and administrators, representatives of ministries of transport, port authorities, and other related entities along with major players in the Belize port sector. The main address declaring the conference open was delivered by Ms. Ruth Main, CEO in the Ministry of Transport and National Emergency Management with responsibility for ports, who spoke on behalf of the Minister Honorable Edmund Castro. Today marks a milestone in ports and ports development, especially for Belize and the region. I'm told that we have unprecedented attendance today. So while I understand that you all wanted to enjoy a piece of this jewel called Belize. This high level of participation is most of all indicative of the importance of the forum. To share ideas, network, and to be visible to other stakeholders in the industry. To share best practices, to analyze the effects of changes in the transportation industry, particularly as it relates to the ports and to coordinate efforts. Important as well is to share your experiences, your challenges, the problems that we all encounter, and to strategize on a way forward in relation to the modernization and implementation of national plans, innovations, and legislations. Over the next few days, presentations will be made, experiences and best practice will be shared, and at the end of the forum, we'll be in a better position to move forward with new and possibly innovative ideas. Mr. Arturo Vasquez, the Chief Executive Officer of the Port of Belize, spoke to us about the forum. The objective is to have the annual general meeting of Repica, which is the Central American Shipping, Shipping, Shipping Association. So in this three-day forum, they have, um, they have their annual general meeting, which they go through their minutes and everything as, as, a, as an ordinary meeting would have. And then in addition to that, then there is panel discussions on, on different topics. For example, um, right after this, we start with um, public-private partnership in port development, which is partnership between government and private sector, which is very important for Belize because Belize is the ports in Belize are all private, private, private controlled. Uh, the Port Authority handles the regulation, but the ports are all private. So it's an important discussion for Belize. I am actually on that panel, so I will have some, some, some things to say for that. There is also a panel of women, women in ports. There is a panel. There is also a panel of safety, safety at sea. There are different um, topics. The next step, I guess, would be to take away whatever you have learned from this. If it pertains to you and it, it's relevant to you, you can implement it. 
what it does also it creates a network you get to know people so you can you can share ideas if you look at the at the um, at the booths that are out there there are people selling their services as well so that's also things that you take away from here when I leave from here there may be somebody over there sh providing a service to ports that I could you know I have no business contact with them and I, and I can do some business with them so it's it's about having the discussions it's about sharing ideas and it's also about having the necessary service providers who are here also to meet the port and the service providers so it's 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 a, it's a networking that, that's really what it is the event is held annually and is rotated among the Central American countries including Belize and Panama after the break, our segment, in case you missed it, don't go anywhere. The Philip Goldson Highway between Belize City and the Philip Goldson International Airport is getting a major facelift to the tune of $31.5 million. Section B of the highway upgrading project between Hallover Bridge and the Buttonwood Bay Boulevard roundabout is underway at an investment of $21 million. Works consist of the full rehabilitation of the road to paved standard, which includes the widening of the road to four lanes, lined sidewalks and drains, wide shoulders, median and parking plus a bus lane at designated sections of the road. LED road lighting will be installed along with road safety features such as signs, reflectors, and road markings. The project will also facilitate in the improvement of underground infrastructure for the public utility companies. The Government of Belize, moving Belize forward. The new permanent representative of Belize to the Organization of American States, OAS, His Excellency Daniel Gutierrez, presented his credentials to the Secretary General, Luis Almagro, on Tuesday, July 25th at the OAS headquarters in Washington, D.C. The credentials accredits Belize's new permanent representative to the Hemispheric Institution. At the ceremony, Ambassador Gutierrez spoke of the need to continue strengthening the OAS to serve and respond to the needs of the people of the region. Belize is unflinching in its desire to contribute to the design of an OAS that withstands the test of time and galvanizes the support of our regional and hemispheric stakeholders. In our very own corner of the woods, in our very own corner of the Americas, the OES has proven its relevance by providing a mechanism by which neighbors can deal with border disputes in a manner that is congruent with international law and order. The Secretary General expressed his confidence in the Ambassador's contributions to the OES, highlighting his broad experience. And that's it for this edition of Belize Now. If you want to provide feedback or send in your comments, please feel free to email us at info at pressoffice.gov.bz or visit our Facebook page and let us know what you think. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. Until next time.